Right, let's see what this thing can do. It's definitely got more power. Who would have thought you could fit an e-scooter in the back of a Twizzy? Welcome back, guys. Yeah, that's right. More scooter mods today. It's not fast enough. Well, to be honest, it is fast enough, but it just needs a little bit more torque. So what I'm going to do today is fit this giant circuit breaker that turned up, which is actually a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so this really, you only need one side of this. This is actually kind of like something for a solar um, panel, really, because it isolates both sides. But I'm just going to use this for now because I know these work well. So this is a DC circuit breaker, um, different to the AC ones. Um, they will trigger properly if you use DC. It won't if you use an AC one. Um, and this is a C63, so it's capable of plus 60 amps, which should be fine for this. I've tested these, and they will withstand 100 amps for like, you know, just a little burst. So I use these in all of my builds, all of my high power sort of e-bike builds. Um, and I'm gonna sort of somehow shoehorn this into there. Right, here we are then, we're in. So if you haven't watched the other video I did, go check it out. Um, I'll leave the link in the description. I've basically modified this scooter um, using a phase runner controller. Gives you more power, higher top end. Same, you can use the same battery, um, but basically you're gonna lose your display and all the extra electronics um, that a scooter might have. But we're gonna work on that bit by bit. I'm gonna add those bits back in, like add the lights, the brakes and, and everything else. Um, it has got brakes, <laughs> just, to, just to clarify. So here's our phase runner controller and it's plugged into the batteries. Um, yellow XT60 connector there. So that just plugs straight in. All the other connections obviously don't, and that's what that last video was about, um, connecting all those things up. So what I wanna do here, because this is a really small fuse holder, this fuse holder can only hold probably like a 40 amp fuse. Now I'm not gonna be doing anything ridiculous, like, you know, 50 amps continuous or anything like that. So I'll be fine to use this, you know, power lead. Um, there are two power leads on this battery because this isn't actually the standard battery that came with this scooter. Um, I told a lie, but you can do this with you know with your with your standard battery if you want. Um, add a phase runner um, just to get a bit more power. So yeah, what effectively I'm going to do is just chop this fuse holder out and just stick that in there. I mean, it is a bit big for the job really, but I'm just going to use it. Really, you just really want one of these. You can get them on eBay. There's an eBay seller that sells one C63. Um, circuit breaker, so not the positive and negative one like this. It has um, just one. Right, so it's basically in there. I'm gonna flick on the power. There's nothing showing yet because I've got to turn the actual controller on itself. Um, all right, so that's on now. And I've connected up to the computer as well. And we can see here it is connected. So what I'm gonna do now you just turn this up as high as it can go, <laughs> basically. Right, so I've put it on 2,500 watts at the moment. Um, I might go a bit higher. I've also set the regen as well up now. So basically what you can do is you can actually have regen braking on the throttle. So when you come off the throttle, it slows down a bit like engine braking. That's what I've done here. I've just kind of moved this um, throttle and brake map so that basically when the throttle's in the, in the zero position, you get regen braking. The only issue with that is you need to, if you want to wheel it along by hand, you're gonna to have to turn the scooter off. Um, but right now I haven't wired up the, um, the brake levers, so I'm just gonna do that. Because without regen, it doesn't stop that great, to be honest, because it's only little discs and you've got a, you know, not even a disc on the front. So for this sort of scooter, just having regen braking is gonna help quite a bit. So, just got to stick it all back together now. So, you can see what I mean by the braking. Look, if you just push the throttle, it'll start to, sm it'll start to go and then you just take your finger off. Normally that would actually carry on spinning. There you go, see it's like got, almost like, it's got a braking force. And you can feel that braking force on the actual motor itself. If you try and move the wheel forward, you can hear that high pitched noise and also that's difficult to turn. Otherwise, fine, because obviously, it's only kind of one way, but that's your regen braking force. I've set it to 35 amps. So I've positioned everything. It's not perfect, but you know, it'll do. Um, I've got a cable tie around here as well, because this plug was starting to get a little bit loose. Don't really want that coming out when you're going along on a bumpy surface or something, because obviously the whole thing's gonna go off and you're gonna have to undo the bottom of this to get to it, to restart it. So it's gonna be annoying. Um, so yeah, that hopefully will prevent that. All this should go pretty tightly in there and won't move around too much. 
Um, all these have been done up as tight as they can. A bit of insulation tape around there as well to make sure if any wire does come out, it's unlikely to touch. You will have a safety backup of the BMS in this battery. So if anything does short out in there, um, the battery BMS in here should, say should, probably will blow a, um, blow a MOSFET or something, um, and which will just cut all the power completely. But hopefully that won't happen. Right, let's see what this thing can do. It's definitely got more power. It feels more punchy, definitely feels more punchy. A seat. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it's not quite gonna do that hill, but that's pretty good. That is pretty good. What is, you notice with the phase running, don't get that real low down sort of power that you would on a Sadvaton. We've talked about this before. Um, you sort of get, once you're rolling, you get that, which is pretty brutal. I'm trying to do that one-handed so I don't fall off. I would say, as standard, the regen braking that they actually put on this scooter as standard is way too much for the battery because it actually is a lot more aggressive than this. This is the regen, so it's literally just a bit of engine braking, which makes a hell of a lot of difference, saves your brake pads, but it's not anywhere near as much as what this is as standard, so it's quite interesting that. Right, so. Basically, it's warm. I've been sat here, I just ate my noodles, and I just sat here for, I've been sitting here for about 10 minutes, and it's, you can feel that that temperature is actually pretty hot. I mean, it's a pretty hot day as well, but I won't read too much into it. What's interesting with regen, of course, is that basically the motor is always working. If you have the regen configured like I've got it here, it's always working. So when you're on the throttle, the motor's working. When you're off the throttle, the motor's working. So it's never really getting a chance to actually kind of get airflow over it to cool it down without something going on. So that's something to bear in mind, especially if you're running kind of more power than you should be on for the rating of the of the hub motor. Most hub motors can cope with, you know, five times the power that, you know, they've, they've got written on the side, but you've got to be careful because the, the wires won't be. So, you know, you might be able to do a quick burst, maybe a quick burst of like, you know, 90 amps of phase current, but don't keep doing it all the time don't go up a hill because you're gonna if you don't burn the motor out you'll burn the wires the wires will start you know getting so hot that the casings will come off right so another thing that's quite interesting this is the throttle so what i did and if you saw in the phase runner suite i created a tiny little gap before the throttle starts so when the throttle is completely off i.e like that regen is on now if you move that a little bit if you move the throttle in a little bit there's an area where there's nothing engaged no throttle or actually regen so what you can, can do is you can coast with it kind of in the middle so it's kind of like you know like an electric car you've got like kind of one foot which does everything so one foot for throttle one foot for braking um but you can actually get to a point on this where you yeah you're in the middle zone where nothing's actually activated which is pretty cool <laughs> not even full throttle. It was struggling to get across here full throttle before. Ooh, it's lovely and cool in here. Love having the aircon in here. So I'd call it a success. It hasn't melted. It's all still working. The, um, the speed control, the temperature, is actually quite warm. You can actually feel it coming through here. This is a metal case, obviously. Um, that's acting as a bit of a heat sink anyway, so that's really not anything to worry about too much. Oh, look, one of my dogs has probably weed on here without me realizing. It's still definitely warm after probably half hour. So if you're gonna do this, you know, treat it with care, like all this stuff. Don't go mad flat out all the time because you will burn this out. This motor will burn out if you, if you continually you know, run up here at full throttle. But other than that, it's absolutely transformed it. And on that note, I'm gonna call it a day. We've got a couple of days left of summer apparently, and then we've got rain. So I'm gonna go out and enjoy that. 
Catch you later, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Like the video. Do the usual stuff. Check out all my other videos. There's plenty of stuff to binge watch for those rainy days and that winter ahead. Catch you later, guys. Thank you.